Senator Sanford. Interesting fellow. Uh, first off, his vault is an above-ground vault. Uh, the reason for that is that he leveled the embankment here, and why he did that was to make it flat enough so that he could build his building on it. And uh, it basically is a building. And everybody looks at it and says it's a Greek temple. But it, it has Greek elements, but it is so a mishmash of uh, Greek temples that it would not be a Greek temple in the classic state. I'll give you a couple examples there. At the very bottom, you see the frieze is below the, the, the columns. That frieze on a temple would be above the, the capital of the column where that blank spot is. On this front, you have Corinthian uh, columns that are short. Corinthian columns were long and thin. Uh, Ionian were thinner, but Corinthian were, were bigger than Ionian, but they were taller. So he squashed the uh, Corinthian uh, tower, uh, columns and put them in the front. On the sides and in the front uh, on either side of the doorway are Doric columns. And those Doric columns are, are square. And so the Doric and the Corinthian would never be mixed together on a, a Greek temple. Now, there's a statue on the roof. And that statue is the goddess of hope. Uh, she has her hand resting on the uh, anchor, and that anchor symbolizes anchoring your uh, faith in Christianity. And she's got her finger pointing up, uh, uh, probably hoping to go to heaven. Uh, now, in a Greek temple, if this was the temple to the goddess of hope, the statue of the goddess would be in the sanctuary of the, the temple, not on the roof. So if you're going to have any statuary on a Greek temple, it would be in the triangle part of the pediment, where just below her, where there's the frieze. So that's where the, the statue should be, uh, like the Parthenon, when they tell you the story of the, of the, um, the goddess. And um, the columns that made you are um, Corinthian, right? Uh, I believe big columns? Yeah. 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 You have large, large Doric, too. Yeah. 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 So who's Sanford, then? Okay, Senator Sanford. Um, he was a, uh, an orphan, came up from the States. His uh, aunt kind of took care of him. Her name was Jackson. Jackson Street is named after that family, and they had a tin uh, factory, and uh, he made all his money by working for his, his uncle. Uh, when his uncle and aunt died, he took over their home and lived there for the rest of his life, and that was called Wessingford. And Wessingford uh, was a mansion on Knobs Hill, and today it's a uh, court, and still called Wessingford Court, and it's a across the street from CHCH TV and Jackson, on Jackson Street. Now Sanford himself uh, did something radical uh, uh, with his thinking. He had his own business and his own business was uh, um, uh, clothing. So what he did in his thinking was that he mass produced clothing. So you could go into his, his store and you would be measured up and on the rack would have been a pair of pants that would fit you. Now this is in the 1870s and what happened there is that that killed the tailor and he made a lot of money. You, you, back in the 1870s you had to go to a tailor to get your suits uh, uh, made and you could go uh, to his shop. He had ready-made suits already and you just had to pay for it and walk out. So he made a lot of money by doing that. The vault itself, Sanford actually built the vault uh, for his son who predeceased him. He did marry. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And this reminds me a little bit of European vaults because the door is glass mm -hmm. on either side. So yeah, and on the other through. side was a gla uh, stained glass window. And uh, again, vandals uh, broke it and there's only the teeny shards left. Do you know who made that stained glass window? No, I don't. I was hoping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's got a double door, and the, the burials themselves would be on either side of the door in the niches that are there. So this is an above-ground vault, and uh, the family members are on either side of the doorway. And it's the only one that we really have above-ground vault in, in uh, the cemetery. And so this would be something of prestige or heritage, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Um, he brought up the architect from New York City who built the vault for Wall Street to build this vault. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And again, he was a rich man, he was a senator, and he did not want to have his uh, vault uh, robbed. Yeah. Yeah. And grave robbing. And why would people grave rob back then? We well, had talked about that briefly before. Because what happens is that when the burials would take place, uh, the prominent men and women, they would uh, have their jewelry uh, buried with them, like a ring or a, a fob, a watch or a, a pin, a, a tie pin, earrings, that type of thing. A necklace or, or bracelet and what would happen is that people would know that or, or think that would happen and the family would not take them back they would bury them with the uh, uh, the loved ones and the grave robbers would go looking for those and wasn't there also some set? oh yeah back then too but that, that's that's a weird one too because uh, they had these strange thing about science at the time they were studying people's skulls and the bumps on their heads to see if, where their intelligence was Right. And they would actually steal body parts to do that. Yeah, which was kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of pseudo science going macabre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Macabre science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, let's look at something else. Okay.